Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here, and uh, I don't belong here. I, uh, I'm, a, as, as I said, I'm a medical doctor, and uh, uh, but more than that, I'm a Baptist layman, and uh, and uh, I'm just thankful to God that uh, that He's been good to me. Um, if you ask a doctor to come speak to you, then you could expect to get an anatomy lesson. And uh, I want to talk about some things in the scriptures here, and I want to read from the 52nd chapter of Isaiah, the 6th and 7th verses. <clears throat> Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore shall they know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. I want to talk about a part of the body, the feet. Uh, perhaps the most unattractive part of the body, but very, very important. The feet bear the weight of the whole body at times. Uh, and the feet move the body. Have you ever tried to go anywhere to take a step without your foot leading? It's hard to do. And this scripture talks about beautiful feet. It's not talking about the feet. We know that. It's talking about the beauty of people who are letting the Spirit of God lead them. And they're following Him. And they're doing what He does. And like Brother Brad said, we want to be around those kind of people. I thank God that I've been around Baptist preachers all my life. And uh, I, I just thank God. Uh, I heard Brother Bryson one time in Louisville, he preached on big feet. And uh, uh, I won't talk about the biggest pair of feet in a minute, but I do want to thank God for every God called man that. Uh, that he's led and that's following him. Uh, and it is an honor to try to do some little something along with you men who preach the gospel to and do the most important work on earth. Uh, what we do is just a little, little thing and it's just to help promote the gospel and maybe help somebody be willing to, uh, to come and hear the gospel. Uh, feet can uh, uh, can get weary. Feet can get calloused. Uh, they can get sore. Uh, God made our feet, though, for a very important purpose. And um, when I see feet that have thick calluses, I'll take a a scalpel and we'll, we'll plane them down and then after we plane them down to where they're smoother we'll put a little oil on them. Uh, it's funny how you can by doing that you can have somebody whose feet are very sore and, and you, you can't figure out why should that help just to plane it down that callus and put oil on it but they uh, invariably people tell us how much that helped. Um, so uh, the uh, uh, you know the anatomy of the feet is not uh, when I was applying to medical school uh, and I went to uh, University of Louisville as an applicant there and they let us sit in on an anatomy class and mine was anatomy of the feet and they had slides and it sliced the feet all the way through in several layers. I went to sleep during that lecture, and that was 
kind of embarrassing when you're there applying, you know, and you want to make the best impression you can. And, and, but we had spent a little too much time out in Louisville that night before. I went with some other students. Um, <clears throat> uh, I was talking about the size of feet in Japan. The custom years ago was for women to bind their feet and make their feet as small as they could make them. Uh, and I don't know, I'll have to ask my daughter-in-law, who I ask everybody to pray for because she's not been saved yet. But uh, uh, if they still do that, but they try to bind their feet, but uh, we don't want to do that. We want our feet are more comfortable when they can spread out a little bit. Toes, the size of the toes vary. And you know, when Jesus was uh, approaching Jerusalem, he had three times in, right before he came in on the, uh, the um, Palm Sunday when he came in, but three times on the way to Jerusalem, he told the disciples that he was going there to die. The first time he mentioned it, uh, Peter argued and said that'll never happen. The next time he mentioned it, it said that uh, uh, they all were grieved. And then the third time it was mentioned, uh, it was kind of glossed over because two of the disciples came with their mother and asked it if they were excited about the approach to Jerusalem. They thought that, that, uh, that they would right away get to do their function uh, as part of a great earthly kingdom. Uh, I think they wanted to be the big toes on the foot. And uh, that's, you know, even, even seeing that, uh, that we, uh, you know, the foot is not the prominent part of the body, but there's no more important, important part of the body. But of course, as the Bible says, all parts of the body were, are important. But I wanted to uh, think about this in respect to Jesus. This applies to the man of God that's called and that goes wherever he goes, whether it's locally or far away, this applies to the man of God and, and, and the feet are beautiful. Uh, but more than anything, it applies to Jesus. And beautiful feet on the mountains. We think about when he was there on earth, uh, the mountains uh, that he climbed. He gave his sermon on the mount. He uh, went to the Mount of Transfiguration, went to the Mount of Olives many times. He went up and down it. And he went to Calvary. Mount Calvary walked up there. His feet walked up that hill one time. And uh, so those are the most precious feet of all. Amen. And uh, it was recognized by a couple of women uh, when Jesus was in the uh, home of Matthew and publicans and friends of Matthew just got saved and he invited all of his friends which I'd like to see that happen when our people get saved. They'll go out and get their friends and bring them in. Uh, that uh, it said uh, in uh, Luke seven thirty seven, And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. And this Pharisee protested about that. But then in verse 44, he, then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. <clears throat> you gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since I came in. 
you did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, the sin, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And then there was, I believe, a second woman, Mary, who shortly before Jesus died, uh, he was with her and her sister Mar Martha. Uh, this is in John 11, uh, 12, 2. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. And Mary took a pound of very costly oil and of spikenard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. And Judas protested that. He had complained about that. Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used, he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have always with, with you, but me you do not have always. They thought those feet were precious. They understood possibly more than the disciples did, the other disciples, about Jesus' mission and what he was about to do. His feet uh, stood in Pilate's hall. They stood in uh, the uh, uh, house, I guess, of Caiaphas. And they stood in uh, Herod's palace, too. Uh, he stood on his feet those, all those times. Uh, and then uh, stood before Pilate and was rejected. And uh, then was given a cross to carry up the hill. And uh, his feet walked every bit. Of, he fell, I believe, on the way, but his feet continued to walk up to uh, Calvary. And um, as far as when he was crucified, uh, the nails, they would have had to cross his uh, uh, ankles over each other. Uh, and then they would have driven the nail through the ankle joint on both feet. That's the only way you could secure it to the cross, a foot to the cross. It has to go right through that ankle joint. And so even on the cross, he bore the weight of the whole body. Now, when uh, I've studied crucifixion, and it's the most cruel and evil way of torture and death that a man has ever devised. And of course, God chose that for his son. He allowed him to suffer the most cruel suffering that man could suffer. But if you were on a cross, you're, you, you'd be, have nails through the wrist. Uh, but really the weight of the body would still be on the feet. And to breathe in that position, the body would lean forward. And uh, every breath would be extremely difficult. So to breathe, you'd have to push up on that nail that's, in, that's holding both feet. And so that's what Christ suffered physically. Uh, his feet that had walked all over Jerusalem, uh, all over Israel, walked into Gentile country. I was surprised recently to hear how, me, uh, how much of Jesus' ministry was actually in the outer edges of uh, Israel in Gentile lands. But he walked at least three times to Jerusalem and back during his ministry. In the, um, and so those feet were nailed to the cross and at that moment were immobilized. And he became totally helpless and, uh, and then was forsaken of his own father, which we, we can only see these physical things. We can't understand or comprehend what it was like for the Son of God to be 
uh, forsaken by his father. Um, the uh, um, in, in one of the many, many visions of Christ in the book of Revelation, John saw different visions of Christ. Every few chapters or every few verses, you'll, you'll see another picture of Jesus. And uh, the first one he saw in, in the first chapter, he saw Jesus' feet of brass. Now brass, of course, was a metal, I guess, maybe the first to really be refined by fire and to made, be made as it was by fire. And so when we see Jesus represented as having feet of brass. And um, of course, that was Satan's bruising of his feet, but those same feet uh, crushed Satan's head at that very time. He's a defeated foe and he's desperate. You know, you don't want to back a desperate, evil person into a corner. Well, well the devil's been defeated and. Uh, uh, but he is, he's, he's still fighting as hard as he can, and uh, the Bible tells us he'll get more ferocious as he sees his time is closer. He knows what's ahead. Amen. But at any rate, the feet of Jesus. Um, John said he wasn't worthy to bend over and, and unloose Jesus' sandal. And... Uh, we approach Jesus at his feet. We sit at his feet and learn. We, we approach his feet. If he walked in here now, every one of us would just fall on our faces right at his feet. And of course, he's here in his spirit. And, but um, the feet of Jesus, it's such a wonderful thing that God became flesh and... Uh, uh, I'm so thankful to that I was born, that I was born, uh, and in my life I've been able to know the Lord, and I've been able to bow at His feet. Uh, and uh, there are times I wish I could kiss His feet. Don't you all wish you Amen. could kiss the feet of Jesus? Here, sure, sure. Everybody that's ever been saved, I mean. Uh, those uh, feet of brass. Uh, I don't know what his feet will be like in heaven. We'll see. Uh, I don't think that's literal. I don't think he'll have brass feet. That's, that's symbolic. But, uh, and I thought about after Jesus was resurrected, he walked on the uh, road to Emmaus with the disciples. He walked right along beside them. But there are other times he didn't need his feet. He'd suddenly appear in a room. He didn't need feet. And uh, uh, most of the time when you read about him after the resurrection, he just appeared on the beach or, or in the uh, upper room or wherever. Uh, but, um, and uh, uh, so I just wanted to think about, about the feet of Jesus uh, if you take that first chapter of Revelation and you look at John's vision there, you can, you can meditate on a lot of different aspects of Christ when you see him as John saw him. And then, then throughout the book of Revelation, Jesus keeps appearing over and over and is described in many things. But I thank God that, uh, uh, that I was born and that I've been saved and that I know the Lord. And uh, uh, it's just been a blessing to try in some weak way to serve the Lord. And a, a great part of, I mean, a great part of that blessing has been to work alongside men, men that are called of God, the men whose feet are on the mountains. Uh, and I, I just appreciate that great privilege. And uh, ask you all to pray for us. And... Uh, I'll try to pray for all of you all.